5.6 diatomic molecules, allotropes, and phases, Friday, December 20th. Uh, diatomic molecules relate to air. Allotropes actually apply to graphite and diamonds. And um, phases of different elements explain why iodine is in a gas. Um, and necessary references for this lesson include Table S, which you can actually use throughout the lesson to analyze and compare melting points, boiling points, and density. And the necessary fact that you have to know is um, standard temperature and pressure, or STP, is 1 atmosphere and 273K. You can find this on your reference tables, actually. Now let's talk about diatomic molecules. Diatomic molecules um, are molecules of only two atoms. Only two, because a dye means two. Um, usually of the same chemical element. All right, and the seven diatomic molecules that exist are bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. In other words, two of the same atom exist at STP. Um, for example, bromine exists as two Br atoms or a Br2 molecule. And to remember the seven diatomic molecules, just remember Brinkelhoff, or B-R-I-N-C-L-H-O and F, pronounced as Brinkelhoff. And these show up as uh, Br2, I2, N2, Cl2, H2, O2, and N2. So just remember again, Brinkelhoff. And di in diatomic molecules stands for two, or two atoms, which is why the two appears next to the symbols for all seven of these elements. Brinkelhoff, or B-R-I-N-C-L-H-O and F. And this appears in this diagram below here with all seven of these diatonic molecules showing. And note that it's two of the same color um, sphere or two of the same uh, element. That's why it's diatonic, because it's two of the same element. And the only seven are Brinkelhoff. So just memorize Brinkelhoff, which is Br2, I2, N2, Cl2, H2, O2, and F2. Now let's talk about phases. Phases of an atom, uh, phases of an atom, molecule, or compound actually uh, depend on their melting and boiling points. And to determine the specific phase of an element, make sure to use table S now. And uh, let's actually go through the steps to determine phase for a specific element. So step one, you have to use table S and find the melting and boiling points of each element you're considering. Um, in the diagram all the way at the bottom of the slide right here, you'll see which columns the melting and boiling points are located on in table S. So look here for melting point, look here for boiling point. You'll also use density, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, um, now, after you find the melting and boiling point of each element you're considering, next uh, you have to determine the phase by comparing temperatures that you're considering to the melting and boiling points. All right, um, now, if the melting point has already been, already been passed by the temperature given, it's obviously a liquid because after you go past the melting point, it turns into a liquid. Now, if the melting and boiling point have already be, both been passed by the temperature given, it's obviously a gas because after the boiling point, you become a gas. I, or something becomes a gas. And if the melting point hasn't been passed by the temperature given at all, it's a solid because underneath the melting point, it's still a solid. All right, so let's try an example of this just to get more sense of this. In this example, the question asks, which element is a liquid at 305 K or Kelvin and 1.0 atmospheres? Also, which element is a gas? So let's note that the temperature we consider here is 305. And we have to compare this to the melting and boiling points of all four elements, magnesium, fluorine, gallium, and iodine. All right, uh, so again, we have to compare 305K to the melting and boiling points of these four elements. Now, if we look at the melting points of the four elements first, um, Mg has a melting point of 923K. F has a melting point of 53K. Ga, 303K and iodine or I-387K. And you can check on table S for these. For boiling points, um, 
MG has a boiling point of 1363K, F85K, GA 2477K, um, and I 457K. Okay? And then at uh, 305K, we'll notice the following. Uh, at 305K, the melting point of GA has been passed, which is uh, 303K. So obviously the melting point has already been passed at 305K. But the boiling point has not. So obviously gallium will be stuck as a liquid because its boiling point of 2477 has not been passed at 305K. Um, so therefore GA or gallium is stuck as a liquid. The melting points of both MG and I, so MG is 923 and I is 387, neither of these temperatures have been passed at 305K. Therefore, they're both solids because you haven't, uh, you haven't melted them yet. So therefore, they're both solids. All right? Um, finally, the melting point and boiling point of F have both been passed, which are 53K and 85K. Both of these uh, points have been passed. So the melting point of 53K and the boiling point of 85K has been passed since they're lower than all the rest. So therefore, since you already passed the boiling point, uh, you'll find out that fluorine is actually a gas. So just make sure you use table S and compare um, the melting point and boiling points to whatever temperature you're considering when you're trying to find out is it a solid, liquid, or gas. Just use table S, the melting and boiling points of the elements you're talking about. Now let's talk about allotropes. Allotropes are two or more forms of the uh, same nonmetal in the same phase with different structures and different properties. So that means it's the same nonmetal and it's in the same phase, same exact phase. But because they're arranged differently, they have different properties. So let's see what we're talking about here and get a better sense of this. Um, three examples are oxygen, carbon, and phosphorus. So first, oxygen has two allotropes, O2 gas and O3 gas which are oxygen gas and ozone gas. All right, um, the nonmetal O is the same, and they're in the same phase, gas here and gas here. But they have different structures, since you see down here, O2 has two oxygen atoms, but O3 has three oxygen atoms. So because O2 and O3 have uh, different structures, um, they therefore have different properties as a result. All right? Now, carbon has three different allotropes C as graphite, C as diamond, and C16 as fluorine, which are all solids uh, and different forms of carbon in the solid state. And the nonmetal C is the same in all three of these. All right? Um, and they're all all in the same phase, solid. They're, all three of these are solids and all three of them contain carbon. But again, they all have different structures and therefore different properties as a result. Finally, phosphorus has three different allotropes, um, P yellow, P red, and P uh, black. And all three of these are solids and different forms of phosphorus in the solid state. All right, so the nonmetal P it's the same for all three, and they're all in the same phase, solid. But they have different structures, and therefore they have different properties as a result. And one of the most immediate properties is that all three of these have different colors. Yellow, black, and red are different colors, and that's due to their different structures. All right? So just remember, same nonmetal and same phase, but different structures and therefore different properties as a result. Now let's try an example problem using what we know, example problem one. For question one, we have to name the group 15 element that exists as diatomic molecules. And the only one is N2, because if you remember, Brinkelhoff has N in it. For the second one, I'm not going to read the question, but the only two that are diatomic molecules are O2 and N2. So just remember again, Brinkelhoff and oxygen and nitrogen are included in this list. Therefore, they exist as diatomic uh, molecules, O2 and N2, where di stands for two. Here, what we need to do is the following. All right, um, STP 
I'm not going to read the question, but STP is 273 Kelvin and one, one atmosphere, as you saw in the introductory slide. So we have to compare this uh, to different elements in the periodic table and see which one's a solid, which one's a liquid, and which one's a gas. First, let's start off with solid. Solid, we know that the melting point has to not be reached yet at 273. And one of the only um, examples of that is Na, because its uh, melting point is actually much higher than that of 273. All right, for liquids, we need to find an element that has a boiling point that has not been reached yet at 273, but the melting point has already been reached before 273. And one example is Br2, which is bromine as a gas. Sorry, no, my fault, sorry. Uh, bromine as a liquid, so Br2 liquid. All right, um, and now uh, gas, we need to find something where the boiling point has already been reached before 273. And one of the examples of this is O2, which is a gas at room temperature, as well as a STP. So at 273, O2 is already a gas. So you just need to compare this against the melting and boiling points again of table S. Um, and this final question, um, we need to find out and compare the boiling point of chlorine as well as its uh, melting point, all right, to draw um, Cl2 molecules accurately. At uh, 250 K, the boiling point has already been reached because the boiling point is 239. So obviously we know we, we've already passed the boiling point. Therefore, we know Cl is a gas, or rather Cl2 is a gas. And it's also a diatomic molecule, which means two particles stuck together because that's what we were shown. So again, it's a gas, and it's um, a diatomic molecule, which means two particles are stuck together like this. And also, for a gas particle diagram, the gas particles have to be far spread out like this, because if you remember from Unit 1, gas particles are spread out far from each other. So just to summarize, it's a diatomic molecule because it's Cl2. The boiling point's already been passed, so it's a gas, and gases we know are spread out. So two of the same chlorine atom all spread out because it's a gas and a diatomic molecule. Example problem two, now let's go over some more of the concepts. In example problem one, I won't read it, but all you need to do is look up sodium, chromium, nickel, and copper and look up their densities and find out which one has the highest density. And if you look it up, you'll find out that Cu has the highest density of 8.96 grams per milliliter from table S, since it's higher than all three of these other numbers. In problem two, um, at STP, both diamond and graphite are solids made of carbon atoms, but we need to compare the structures and properties. So we know that um, both allotropes of carbon, diamond, and graphite have different structures, and therefore they have different properties. Even though they're the same element, which is carbon, in the same phase, which is solid. Uh, question three, you have to compare oxygen atoms in O2, which is oxygen gas, and O3, which is ozone gas. So we know that both allotropes, um, even though they're the same element, oxygen, with the same phase, gas, they have different structures, and as a result, they'll have different properties. The reason for the different properties is because they have different structures. Finally, this is actually kind of a review of um, earlier in this unit as well as unit four. But if M is a metal, what is its phase at STP? And if you remember, we know already that most metals are solids at STP, except for HG, which is a liquid. So therefore, we would answer M is most likely a solid at STP, because most metals, again, are solids at STP, except for HG, which is a liquid. So most metals, again, are solids at STP, except for HG or mercury, which is a liquid. Finally, I'd like for you to try this on your own for homework and bring it in for Friday, December 20th. Thank you very much.